Today, let's learn about some techniques of matte painting within After Effects. Now the actual definition of a matte painting, according to Wikipedia, is a painted representation of a landscape set or distant location that allows filmmakers to create an illusion of an environment that is not present at the filming location. So when working with an After Effects, we could call this a digital matte painting. Now matte paintings have been around for over 100 years actually, with the first recorded one, supposedly in 1907, by a filmmaker named Norman Dawn. And since then, we've seen it in classics such as Citizen Kane, Wizard of Oz, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, and many others. Now, in these examples, it's not always just a painting that's put on glass to create the effect, but sometimes it can be a combination of paintings, sketches, photos, 2D textures, and 3D textures all hodgepodge together to get the desired effect that the filmmakers want. So let's take these techniques, bring them into After Effects with a few example shots. In our first shot example, we are going to extend our set. So in After Effects, let's first create a 3D camera from our shot, which we can do so by going to the tracker window and hitting track camera. Now the software will automatically begin tracking, so once that's done, you wanna to go to the effects control panel and hit create camera. And now we'll have a 3D camera to work with in our shot as we begin to build our set. Next thing we'll do is duplicate our shot and with the top one, mask around the horizon and also mask around our subject. And with the bottom one, create a mask around our sky. And now we can begin to add anything we want in this shot, applying it over the layer that we masked out the sky so we can maintain the sky element that we got on location. Now, when you're adding elements to your scene, you obviously want elements that will match your scene. So I downloaded a ton of desert landscapes, uh, mountains, and a few sci-fi concept images from pexels.com and uh, Pinterest, Motion Array, Adobe Stock. And there's also a website that you can go to called mattepaint.com where you can get super high resolution photos specifically for matte painting. Now it's not free, it does cost money, but maybe, maybe you have the budget. I mean, kudos to the website for their marketing, you know, their title, their website name, it's straight to the point. They know exactly what they're selling. And remember when adding these elements, make sure that you make them 3D layers so that the camera that we created can read them. And when you do that, you'll begin to get something like this. We have our original shot, then a desert landscape, some distant mountains, clouds to fill it in, a space station in the sky, small facility in the distance, spaceships, Saturn, closer rock structures, and finally lens flares to spice it up. And while this looks good right here, now we want to adjust all the images along the Z axis. We can easily do this by selecting the view and selecting two views with the right view being the top view. Now we can highlight our desired image and simply grab the Z axis arrow and drag. So for example, the mountain in 3D space would be far more distant from the camera than our actress. So we need to select it and drag it far back. Now doing this will affect the scale of the image, but we can quickly fix that just by hitting S on the layer and then scaling back up. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, Austin, I did this, but I don't really see any difference in the shot. Like what did it even do? Well, particularly it did nothing, but that's because our shot doesn't have any camera movement. If your shot was say trucking to the left or to the right, then doing this step will give it that parallax effect that's gonna help sell your shot even more. So keep that in mind. Once done with that, our last step is to add some lens blur where needed to the images and color correct them all. When color correcting your images, apply the Lumetri color effect and your main tools to use here will be your basic color correction tools and the faded film effect located in the creative tab, which will help fade your image to give that natural look of depth that we see in nature. And as a bonus tip, we can take the full composition from our project window, drag it down into a new comp and in this new comp, add an adjustment layer. And then on this adjustment layer, let's add a LUT that best represents the final look that you would want. And then as we color correct, each element that we've added into our scene, we can go to this full comp and see exactly how it's going to be affected when you begin to color grade it. Now in this example, you can see that our camera does have movement as we push closer to our subject. Now what helps an editor so much is smooth, stable footage. So for this shot, we use Zhiyun's Crane 3S, which handled our built red Komoda just fine. So if you wanna learn more about this powerful gimbal or you wanna get your hands on one, link is in the description below. Uh, this is not a sponsor, they're not affiliated. Uh, it's just a great piece of gear, so check it out. Now, unlike our first example, we're not gonna create a 3D camera for this shot. Rather, we're gonna create tracking data within Mocha. Now, I would love to explain that here, but I'd rather explain it right here with you at the computer. So in After Effects, we have our shot right here. We wanna right mouse click, go to Effect, then go to Boris FX Mocha, hit Mocha AE, and then we can click our logo right here to open up Mocha. Now, if we click it right now, it's gonna give us this little uh, message. Basically what we wanna do is go down to where it says quarter quality. We wanna change that to full and then hit Mocha again 
and now our software will open. So in Mocha, we can go over to the XBLINE layer tool up here and then create our first little rectangle. We can get the sky and the tree line and just go off frame right here, right mouse click to escape and then click the same tool but hold down the click and then have the uh, X plus tool right here. Basically that's going to add more splines to the same layer. So this one layer is reading all this tracking data and not just creating a bunch of different layers. So right mouse click right there and you can see our little dotted box here selected both because again they're on one layer. Now before we start tracking I want to make one more change uh, real fast. I'm in the essentials uh, workspace here. I want to go to the classic. Uh, we want to go to see where it says link to track right here. And it has layer two. Select that, drop down, and then select none instead. And one more thing to do before we track forward is go down here where it says minimal percent pixels use. Let's just crank it up to around 75 or so. And now we begin to track forward, adjusting our two rectangles here, making sure that they don't intersect with our subject. So let's go ahead and do that. It's totally fine to move our splines around here because we're not getting tracking data from the splines themselves, but just from the pixels within these windows. Once we're done with that, we can add in our planar grid and we can make adjustments to the planar grid uh, with the show planar surface, this little blue square with an S in it. And uh, I'm gonna expand it out to the entire frame just by clicking that little icon right there. And then I'm just going to shrink it down now. And this is just going to represent almost, you know, the, the sky in the background, which is just this uh, straight wall back there in a sense. And once we do that, if we play through, we can see how well our track is and you can see it tracks fairly well. It does have a little bit of a shift, a little, little sideways, little shift there at the end, but that actually isn't gonna affect our sky at all. You wanna control S to save this info right here and then we can just exit out. And now back in After Effects, we're ready to take that tracking data that we got from Mocha and apply it to our sky. Now, what better way to replace our sky than using the same sky that we got. And what I mean by that is earlier in the day of filming, we got this shot right here where the sky was very fluffy and beautiful. And I and I like the sky right here. So what we can do is, is I just took a freeze frame right here and brought it into this composition. And we're just going to use this sky for our sky replacement. That way we don't have to color correct or anything. Now it is just a small area of sky to work with in this freeze frame right here, but to fix that, we can just right mouse click on our freeze frame layer and go to open and then open layer. And now in this layer, we can go to our clone stamp tool and then hold down alt to get our little swatch that we want of sky. So we can just, you know, grab it right there or something. And now we can just begin to paint over our tree line and clone the clouds. And we can do this for the whole image if you want. And now we have a full image of beautiful clouds that are perfectly color corrected for our shot. So if we go back to our composition right here, let me unsolo that layer. And we click on the our main layer where we have the mocha effect. See how we have the tracking data right here. We can hit that drop down window and click create track data. Now when we select that, there's only gonna be one layer, layer two. I don't know why I labeled it two uh, available. And that's gonna be for our sky, hit okay. And now you can see we have these little track points right here. And now we can go down here export options we're going to change to transform and then layer export to we're going to change to clouds now if we turn off our main layer and we look at our cloud layer we can see that it is now moving with our shot and that's all i have for you that's all that was on the script that i was sent so back to you austin The next thing we're gonna do is rotoscope. So first let's duplicate our shot and for the top layer, let's rotoscope our actress within Mocha only focusing on where her body crosses the tree line. Now the bottom layer is for our sky, but instead of rotoscoping, we can simply key out our sky. So go to effect, keying, extract, and drag our white point down until the sky vanishes and matches well with the trees. If you find that the keying is removing pixels from the ground or the actress's clothing, then create a simple keyframe mask from the ground to the tree line on the top layer and this should solve your problem. Finally, we can keyframe the lens blur effect to have the sky become more out of focus as we push into our subject. So we can now move on to our final example, which is going to take both techniques that we've just learned and create a style that caters to digital artists and those that create concept art. 
So in this shot, let's treat it like the sky replacement that we just did, but let's use this image as our sky instead. In other words, I'm about to do the exact same steps that I just did for example two without showing you to save you time. <laughs> Two hours later. Once done with that, we can right mouse click on our image and pre-compose, leave all attributes and hit OK. So now nothing has changed with our shot, but we can now go into our sky replacement comp by double clicking. And here on this still image, we can add anything we want to our horizon. Doing it this way does limit the parallax effect, which isn't a problem if you don't have a lot of camera movement, but also doing it this way allows a digital artist to have a full canvas to do whatever he wants to it. In fact, you can even export this composition as a PNG, bring it into whatever software you prefer to do concept art or digital paintings with, and then import it back into After Effects without having to make adjustments because it's already tracked in. So really it's like a canvas sandbox for you to do whatever you want. So guys, those are some techniques for matte painting within After Effects, and I hope that helps you out with any project you got going on right now with all the example shots that we looked at today they're all from my most recent short film worm radio so if you haven't already go ahead and check that out show your support like subscribe and as always god bless and i will see you in the next one